In the wilderness, grace in the wilderness, y'all. Even in the darkest storm, I won't have to fear no more. Mm. Every day you show me you are good. Hallelujah! Every day, every day, oh, you are good. Woo! He gives us grace, y'all. Grace. Grace in the wilderness is where I be, man. Like uh, John the Baptist, baby. <laughs> John the Baptizer. But we're out in the wilderness, guys, here in this world, and God shows us grace everywhere we go. And, you know, as I'm preparing for this video, um, the Holy Spirit moves me. I like sharing my experiences with God and the Holy Spirit leading my way today so you know the feel and the excitement and the um, creativity of the Holy Spirit told me, go grab my wife's phone. Go out to the picnic table away from the house over here, right? And and I'm way from the house here on, on um, beautiful um, brother and sister Jeremy and Tara um, Clark's uh, property. And uh, just uh, blessing us, um, opening their homes up like God's going to open the kingdom of heaven up to paradise. And, you know, um, we live in a small cabin uh, where we live here. And we are so grateful for that. And it's like a mansion because Jesus is there. But they literally like have like a beautiful house. It's like a mansion to us. It's like their bathroom is as big as our cabin. <laughs> True story. But you know, God's grace, um, God's redemption at Christ's expense, and through Jesus Christ's precious blood, um, we have grace and we have mercy because of that grace, man, you know. And I just love, um, just love the way the Holy Spirit leads me. And today's devotional is called a morning song. And no matter all the distractions going on here, guys, in our in the, in the, in the, down the roads we travel, right? I'm not in your shoes. You're not in mine. My sandals, your sandals, whatever you're wearing today. Um, but we're all walking down the same road path of life. We're all in the wilderness right now. We all literally are in the wilderness, you know, and God keeps us safe, you know, from the bears, the tigers, right? <laughs> this, the poisonous snakes, you know, and that represents uh, demon-possessed people and demons and Lucifer himself because we're in Satan's system and we have grace in the wilderness, man, where other people, they go through the wilderness and they struggle and they get they get stung and they get bit and they get tore apart, you know, by, by this life, by this world, by demons. And we have God's grace in the wilderness, guys. As we go through, we got God's favor. And one thing we can't forget, guys, is never, ever, ever lose focus on Jesus. Um, the devotional is really beautiful. My daughter, Madison, um, you know, as I was, um, drawing closer to God, wasn't there yet. You know, I was like on the fence, you know, you know, playing, um, church on Sundays and not really living for the Lord, except when I was with my daughter, you know, I wanted to be the best role model in front of her. I could. So it was none of the bad habits that I would ever do when I'm by myself in front of her because I was trying to teach her better than what I was doing. And only God can really do that. God working through you as a parent, as a guardian, as a big brother, a role model in anybody's life in general, only God can do that. But we need to stay focused on Jesus and God, his almighty power that lives within us. Okay. Just know that. Okay. We are covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. No virus, no parachute, not opening up at 10,000 feet. We hit the ground. Why didn't we die? Why didn't that person die to get up? Maybe a bruise here or there should have been like a watermelon squashed. God's grace in the wilderness, man. It's not your time to go home yet. So we don't need to walk around in fear. Enjoy life. Enjoy where you're at. Whatever um, neck of the woods, since I'm out in the woods here in uh, Harrison, Michigan, <laughs> whatever neck of the woods you're in around the world, whatever corner of the world you're in, God wants you right there. And the whole thing is we cannot lose sight of God like Peter did when he stepped out of the boat, or we will sink under this um, under, undercurrent this, uh, that tries to pull us under in depression, anxiety, addiction of any kind, right? Um, nicotine, marijuana, cocaine, pills, etc., whatever it might be. But God can keep us afloat, you know, and, and that's the whole thing. If we lose focus in him, we go under. We sink in depression, sink in weakness, we sink in fear, we sink in everything. But Jesus Christ literally is our, our lifeguard. Um, and uh, 
you know, he, he's just there for us. When we start to go under, he's there to pull us up, right? Praise the Lord. And we got grace in the wilderness, guys. I love that song by um, Stars Go Dim. Um, not my music. It's it's a good brother named, uh, I can't remember his name right now, but that's the name of his group there. What he calls his stuff, Stars Go Dim. Check him out. Really, call, really cool song called Grace in the Wilderness. Um, really good Christian brother. I liked him for a long time now, and the Holy Spirit moved me and said, hey, you're out in the woods. Let's use that song, Grace in the Wilderness, and like, bam, you got it, man. Lights, camera, Jesus. <laughs> but it's on and popping here, guys, out here today. A beautiful, uh, breezy day here. Um, summer's winding down. It's September 4th, and a bit breezy, breezy today, and it feels good, man, just to be alive and um, to be walking through the wilderness and having God's grace upon me, guys, and it's upon you. But we just can't lose focus in the busyness of our lives, whether yard work, um, uh, your your job, the kids, the school, the, the um, soccer games, the baseball games, whatever you take your kids to, if any, or just, you know, everyday life for you, you know, getting up, maybe aches and pains, fighting through stuff, um, whatever it might be. We just can't lose focus of God. That's the main message. But it's a morning song to remind you when times get tough, the tough get praying. But actually, let's start singing for the Lord. You know, there's a great song, uh, Jeremy Camp. Um, how's that song go? Uh um, I can't remember right now, but it's just some different songs, some hymns you might know. And, and, and as I hear a song off in the distance while I was going through a tough time, it's like that light bulb, Jesus pops up, Bloop, the light of the world. When I was in darkness of thinking about tomorrow, when I'm bringing worries in from tomorrow into today, which is a big no, no, because today's worries are enough for today. You know, if we bring tomorrow's worries into today. Then it's double the double whammies, you know what I'm saying? It's a double the heaviness, right? And we don't need to walk around with that kind of heaviness. Today's got its own worries. Tomorrow, I might not even live past today. The Lord might take me home today. You know what I'm saying? And I don't be sad for me. Be happy for me. And don't don't cry for me. And don't um, you know, uh just don't feel bad if we never talked, et cetera, et cetera. I'll be waiting for you in heaven, man. Hallelujah. And um, just don't feel bad for me. I'm going to heaven. I, I try to put in as much work as I can for the Lord. Put my life down and pick up that cross. And man, it gets heavy some days. Uh, I'm going to cry, but it's like I carry dead weight around. I'm, I'm trying to preach the word of God, letting him flow through me to everyone that I know. From my nephews to my sister to my brother-in-law to my childhood friends and even strangers. And they reject it. They reject Jesus, the very one that could keep them afloat from sinking under in that depression, addiction, sadness, anxiety, and fear. And man, it's like, I got a great life. I, I hurt for everybody else out there. All my brothers and sisters, man, we're all, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit. God lives within us. We are saved by grace. Hallelujah. God's redemption at Christ's expense at that cross, that beautiful day on 2000 years ago on Calvary, plus years ago in Calvary. But my, I hurt for everybody else. I hurt watching everybody suffering from addiction when all they got to do is pray. When Satan tells you, oh, it's a tough day. Oh, you had a rough day. Get that drink. Get that smoke. Get that snort. Stop and hold up. God's got all you need. And he's one prayer away from that victory. When you feel your, when you get in your mind, this is where the battlefield is, right? <sighs> Game day for the football, uh, football players are on the field. Us as Christians, it's right here. This is our football field. This is our game. This is our, our playing field right here. And when Satan comes with that, uh, that, that, um, you're, um, let's see how, help me out. Holy spirit. Hallelujah. When, when Satan starts pass rushing you, right? Like they do the quarterback, the defensive ends, try to get to the quarterback to keep you from throwing that touchdown pass. Right. When we're under attack, that's when we pray. Then God brings out the blockers. You know what I'm saying? He blocks Satan from you, from tackling you, from sacking you. So you can throw that touchdown pass right into somebody's arms. Do you dig that boy? Hallelujah. Thank you. Holy spirit for that creativity. I call upon his name. Jesus says, if you ask in my name, you shall receive. And I call the Holy Spirit to let him flow through these videos. And sometimes the flesh gets in the way. I make mistakes. I stumble and stumble, but he holds me up <laughs> and carries me across the goal line for that touchdown, baby. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. The morning song is today's title, guys. And we're going to get into this, but we got to stay focused on the Lord. And we have to ask him like Psalm 51 verse 10 says, and I want you to take scripture and personalize it. Create in me a new heart, a clean heart, Lord. Oh God, almighty and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord. Hallelujah, O God Almighty. And renew a right spirit within me. What's that scripture? 
is King David. David, not, not king yet, in, in the book of Psalm 51.10, we must ask God, less of Daryl, less of you, brothers and sisters, and more of you, Jesus. Come into that area of my life and make me more like Jesus. And it's going to get tough because God's purifying you, and you're going to go through the fiery trials. Keep that in mind, okay? That's how we get purified, going through tough times, right? What don't kill you actually makes you stronger. Hallelujah. Ask Jesus. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Guys, uh, Jesus was the perfect example for all of us to follow. First Peter 2.21 um, says, read about Jesus, be like Jesus, guys. And that's what we got to do. And I'm going to go ahead and start reading here. I don't want to get too far off subject matter here at, at, the, at the subject matter at hand. The devotion was called a morning song and, you know, sing for the Lord and and when you hear songs like I did today, when I was floating in the darkness, Satan was attacking me and I floated in the darkness. I heard a song and it's like, bam reminded me of Jesus, reminded me of God, the power that possessed, that I possess of the Holy Spirit would lives in me. Boom. It was like lights on, man. The darkness flees. When you turn a light on in the dark room, what happens to the darkness? It's gone. When you pray, when you call God into that moment, the demons of darkness flee. And now God's light is upon us, guys. Strength, almighty strength of God flowing through us. His peace, his joy, his comfort. Oh, man, it's so wonderful. Woo! Hallelujah. All right, guys, we're going to get into this right now. We're going to go to the book of First Peter. And uh, we got some people flying down the road up there. Distraction. Keep me focused. Holy Spirit. And... Uh, we have grace in the wilderness guys stars go dim check it out y'all it's a beautiful jam and he's got a beautiful he's a beautiful guy uh brother uh, overcome i think drug addiction alcohol something like that and the god came into his life and, and gave him power to overcome things that overcome him praise the lord it says uh submit to god resist the devil likewise you younger people submit yourselves to the elders yes all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility for god resists the proud but gives grace to the humble those who humble themselves and ask jesus christ into their life as their lord and savior and you submit your life to god man it's amazing now you have god's grace upon your head and it's a crown of glory guys hallelujah number six says therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, lay your life down, walk in the Lord and, and lead and, and pick him up and, and live for him now that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. Whatever care is worry, whatever you care you have right now, your worry, um, that heavy burden, right? He cares for us. And what does he say here? Casting all your care upon him carries your worry lift it to him for he cares for you He will take care of it But we must call upon his mighty name and we must throw it up to him to get us out of our hands Here's that trouble. Here's that. Here's that worry in my hand. Lord take it from me Oh now my hands are free from that heavy burden. Hallelujah. I think I just hit a squirrel <laughs> Praise the Lord guys all jokes aside, but number eight says be sober be vigilant we need to be sober-minded. We don't need to pollute our, our bodies with drugs and alcohol. Listen to me. If you're struggling right now, it's because you're not calling on God in those moments that you need, you know, your fix of weed, a drink, a beer, a smoke, a pill, nicotine, whatever it might be. We don't need to pollute our bodies because Jesus, who went through the worst pain, more pain than we could even come close to or imagine, beaten like a dog by a big Roman soldier with a, with a whip that contained like shards of glass, rocks, hooks, fish hooks. Come on. Boom. Into Jesus' skin and pulling it off, man. Oh, man, that hurts. Oh, I had a fish hook in my finger a long time ago and it hurt. I can't imagine what poor Jesus went through. I love you, Jesus. <laughs> this is why I try to live my best life for him. Hallelujah. And we don't need drugs. Jesus was offered on a stick with a sponge by the Roman soldier as he was beat, hung on a cross, nails through his hands and feet, and he rejected drugs. Why? Because he had perfect peace. And believe it or not, he, he was in comfort by God's presence at that very moment when you would have been in excruciating pain. You wouldn't have been, you would have been like, give me more, more. Jesus said, no. He just rejected. He turned his face away from the drug on the sponge, a hallucinating uh, drug. Excuse me, I messed that word up. But to take your mind off the pain, just to put you in a fantasy world like the weed, the drinks do, and all this stuff. We don't need to escape reality when we got God on our side. We have grace in the wilderness. God is fighting these battles for us. We pray. He comes in and we get the victory. That V-I-C-T-O-R-Y victory. We never need to bow down to nicotine, drugs, alcohol to calm us down, to take away pain. And yes, there are some medications for that. Marijuana has a medical purpose. It's for seizures and it's for munchies for people who have cancer who can't eat because of the cancer. A medical purpose. It'd be like me taking a Percocet right now with no broken bones or no injuries. It's not, it's wrong. 
You can't just smoke weed just to lay around the house. Come on, guys. I'm being honest with you. I've been there. I know what you're going through, but I'm telling you right now, look at me, clean from drugs, clean from alcohol of any sort. My temple is clean, except for my horrible cooking. But God sustains me when Satan lies to me, Lucifer the liar lies to me and puts that thought up here on the, on the, on the playing field of life. And my brain is where the game is taking place in my mind. I go right into prayer. Now God's truth comes from heaven. Truth crushes the lie because now God tells me, I will help you. You prayed to me. Now my presence is upon you. You can find peace in the presence of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. I don't care what you're going through. Small, nothing too small he don't care about. Nothing too big he can't handle because he's bigger than everything. He created life, man. He's bigger than life. Hallelujah. Yahweh. Hallelujah. Woo, the great I am, baby. And he's on our side fighting for us. Boom, 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 boom. Knocking Satan out and all them little pesky demons. Knocking them out for us, man. Until the next time. But we pray, throw the worries in the air in a prayer, leave them right there, and God rains down the victory for us. That V-I-C-T-O-R-Y victory from up above, coming down with that heavy hand, the right hand of God. Woo-wee! The Holy Spirit power. We got it. God living within us, fighting for us, and we never need to resist. We, we always need to resist the devil and can't say we don't need. We can't. We can because we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Philippians 4.13 says, submit to God, resist the devil. When these thoughts of sin, drugs, Go to the drugs, alcohol, nicotine, anger, lust. When they come upon you, pray. Because Satan is putting darkness upon you to get you to sin, to pull you out of Christ's character, to make you sin against our almighty God who suffered enough and we don't need to keep hurting his feelings by sinning. Come on now. That's what got me focused. Every time we sin, a pastor told me one time, Daryl, it's like pulling Jesus off the cross after everything he went through, the beating, the hanging on the cross, the torture, and him laying dead on the ground and me walking around spitting on him, kicking on him after he's dead. Woo! That was a serious thought and, and visual in my head that got me to want never to sin again. Like, I reject sin, and I got the power against sin anytime, any place, because God is within me, and he resists the devil, submit to God, which means pray in those moments that Satan's trying to get you to sin or feel fearful or depressed or full of anxiety. You pray, and God comes in. He makes it all go away. Hallelujah. Verse 8 says, be sober and vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks like a roaring lion. Roar, roar. But when you turn around, it's a little kitten. He's deceitful. He's de he's de full of deception. He lies to us, guys, to make us think he's bigger than what he is. But God's in total control of your life and everything going on, as bad as it looks like with the robots and the Chinese army coming. Da, 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 da. It doesn't matter. God is still in control and allows these things to happen, but he's in total control. So fear not. Praise God. Let's move on. Number nine says, um, the roar, well, actually, let me go back. Be sober, verse eight of number five of first Peter. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks like around, like, about like a roaring lion. Help me out, Holy Spirit. Getting too excited. The flesh is getting in the way. Hallelujah. More of you, less of me, less of Daryl. Hallelujah. Seeking whom he can devour. Resist him steadfast in faith. Pray. Let God come in and fight that battle for you. You never need to sin again. Hallelujah. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world, but may the God of grace, God of grace, guys, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while, perfect and established, strengthen, I'm sorry, perfect, while perfect, established, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory, the domination, or I'm sorry, the dominion forever and ever. Amen, guys. And that's all we have to worry about is God. God is in control of all things, both in the world and throughout eternity, guys. And that's what that means. To him, the glory and the dominion forever and ever. God is in total control now and later, man. He's been in control since day one. And yeah, it hurts some days, but we got to go through things, through our suffering, other people's benefit, right? Praise the Lord. But we need to stay focused on the Lord while we're walking in the wilderness, right? Praise God. We need to stay focused on God. No matter how busy you get today, remember, bring God along with you like you bring your cell phone, your wallet, your MasterCard, your glasses. We need them all, but we need God more. And he's the one that can help us fight the good fight and to give us victory. His almighty strength, his sovereignty, his goodness and strength reign over everything you're going to face today. Praise the Lord. Sent in by Sam Watley from Alabama. All right, here we go, guys. Um, it's called A Morning Song. Years ago, I worked at night. It was, it was a hectic life. I took my two children 
to and from school and then to sports um, after school activities. That's what we were mentioning earlier in the video, right? About a hectic life, you know, whether you do these things or not or whatever you're going through, whatever is hectic in your life and you know just living life getting up and dealing with the world is hectic enough right so it says i took my two children from school and then to their sports um and, or after school activities i seldom slept well i was often grumpy and completely exhausted by the week so i asked my family to please keep the house quiet until 10 a.m on saturdays hoping to get that needed sleep mm, good luck with that one right <laughs> Early one Saturday, I woke to a shrill voice of my four-year-old Andrew, singing at full volume. I bounded from <laughs> our bedroom, right? Just can you imagine a parent jumping up going, oh, I told him to be quiet and they're singing, half asleep and irritated. But as I came to Andrew's bedroom, Sam says, um, his words pierced my soul. He sang, create in me a clean heart, O Lord, my God. Can you imagine that? One of her children singing this beautiful song. All kids need God. Tell your kids about Jesus now. It says, he was sitting on the floor looking up at me and his hands were full of plastic toys. I stood there still recoiling from the irritation or yeah, ir um, yeah, irritation. And my attitude suddenly changed, All right? Running down there without God on her mind. And now here's God's words, song being sung by a little child, innocent child, their son, Andrew, and changed her whole outlook. Wow. My attitude suddenly changed. I told him how beautiful his song was. He had revealed an important need in my life that I had overlooked. In my haste to take care of my family's earthly needs, I neglected to keep my heart filled with peace, love, and joy that only can come from God up above, guys. You know, as we get caught up in our worldly lives, you know, waking up, the kids, brushing your teeth, getting yourself ready, the kids ready, relationship issues, um, financial burdens. But we can go through anything and still have peace have our hearts filled with peace love and joy that only God can give because if we don't call on God and we're not in his presence we're in this world this world really stinks guys it stinks to the utmost with hatred depression anxiety no peace no joy no love whatsoever it's chaotic hateful and sad depressed right so now when we feel that way we must go right into prayer and never lose focus of God praise the Lord guys in many years, in the many years since since then, I have been reminded of a lesson each time I think of my son's morning song. Wow, just always stay focused on the Lord. No matter what you're going through, you're one, one prayer away from the victory. Let me say that again. One prayer away from victory, bringing God into that moment. You have to activate your phone to work. You need to activate the key to turn the car key to get the engine starting. How we get God started in our situations by praying. Turn that key of prayer. Let God come in and give you the victory, y'all. Hallelujah. This is amazing to be out here in this beautiful property in my beautiful brother and sister's home. My wife is off in a recliner. I'm taking some pain medication. You know, we pray. She takes the pain medication and um, she's just relaxing right now. You know, uh, we've been out for a while, but her arm started to thump on her. You know, I rebuked them demons of sickness. I asked God for healing. Um, I just know this one thing, my, re my relationship with the Lord when you pray about things and they don't go away, it's because you need to go through that. My wife has to go through this for some reason. Only God knows, but I'm gonna cry because when my wife hurts, I hurt. When you hurt, I hurt. That there's a purpose behind the pain. And my wife has to go through this for a purpose. And we must trust in God the whole way through this journey because he's never let anybody down in this book. 66 books of amazing people, broken, beat down, and unqualified God fixed them up, made them strong and qualified them to serve him, to have joy, have peace and um, strengthen their lives to keep pushing on. And that's what we need to do. And God sustains my wife through this tough time. You know, I've been praying more people who haven't prayed in years are praying for her. There's purpose behind the pain and goodness will come out of this um, shoulder injury for my wife. Praise the Lord. We trust you, Father. I trust in Father when a lie from hell came against me. I bring it up all the time. I hated God. I was like, why, why, why? He sent me to Joseph in the Old Testament. Oh, I read about Joseph. Chapter 39, hey, worked out pretty good for Joseph. He trusted God. Job went through the worst of the worst uh, next to Jesus, right? And uh, everybody who loved God went through the worst of the worst just to keep it just on an even level field. Nobody suffered more in lots of ways. They all were went through a lot of pain and suffering, but other people benefited through it. And this pain and suffering they went through back then 
we're benefiting through it today and these amazing stories that they wrote down. Our Bibles are literally history books and a friendship and God's love, um, beautiful words of love and, and a love story to us and just amazing um, reading God's word and seeing what he did for people and how they never gave up on God and always trusted in God through the walk, through the journey until they went home. Jesus did it. And Jesus did definitely had the worst of the worst and he rose from the dead and so will we guys so fear not stay focused on the God always and thought for the day we're gonna wrap this up in the busyness of my day and of our day I will remember God's joy no matter how sad you get right now how angry pray God's peace his joy his love will come upon you man and you will feel fantastic um i always say we're having some good times following jesus why because jesus woo, and the holy spirit are dynamite <laughs> hallelujah guys praise the lord i'm gonna get up out of here guys and i'm gonna go uh hang out with my wife we're gonna pray a little more and i'm gonna get this video uploaded i hope you guys all have a very blessed day wherever you may be in this big beautiful world and just know stay focused on the lord and when this world brings you down, pray God will pull you up. When that darkness comes upon you, you can't see joy, peace, and hope, and strength. Pray. The light will shine upon you. God's mighty presence will be upon you. The light of the world, Jesus Christ, God lives within you. He will light up your situation. Now you will see hope. You will see healing. You will see peace. You will see joy through it all. We got it all in Jesus Christ, y'all. When you got Jesus, you got everything you need. Peace be with you. If the good Lord takes me home before you, I will leave the lights on like Motel 6. <laughs> Love you, Gary Lemus. That one's for you, baby. Hallelujah. Good brother, Gary. Hold it that back in Bmore City. Love you, bro. Love, love you. Love everybody else. My brothers and sisters out there, march on, soldiers. We'll be home soon. Never fear. Jesus is near. Hallelujah.